Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to talk about JavaScript or BioJavaScript. And um, I'm Manuel Copas, and I'm based at the Genome Analysis Center, which is a new institute for genomics research at the Norwich Research Park in Norwich. And um, to introduce this, I would rather like to give you a little bit of a flavor of a typical scenario for biological web applications. So let's assume that you want to develop a new visualization tool. And of course, you like to comply with this great reproducibility trend that of reusing the data and the software that is available. So you search in Google for one particular type of visualization. And this is what you get. So you get uh, different types of different shapes of pieces of software that you don't really know where they come from with different shapes, different um, standards, different levels of um, development. And why is this? Well, it's because scientific research software probably was developed with one use only in mind. Uh, perhaps there wasn't any documentation. Of course, you are not really obliged to get the documentation out as long as you know you get it published. And of course, um, what could happen as well is that actually the functionality is there, but it's not in just one piece of software. There are different types of software that are developed by different people with different standards, with different dependencies, with different maintainability statuses. And what you would like to do is to try to put them together. But unfortunately, you know, when you contact the developers, their email is set to vacation and you get no uh, response. So really, I think that the situation is kind of a, a widespread uh, throughout the software uh, community. So could there be a way whereby we could really begin to start reusing truly the software that is available so that actually we don't have to reinvent the wheel the time all the time. What would we need in order to do that? Well, I think first of all you need to have a catalogue of what's available so that really you can see what you can build with these pieces because otherwise you know you may start doing chimeras that don't really do any work. And of course, you also need to have an easy way to find the different pieces. So you know what pieces go with which pieces. And, and so that way you can have a much better understanding of what you need to build. And of course, you also need a guide to be able to, uh, to use this nice application. Some type of documentation that will let you know which pieces fit with which pieces. So really what you would really need is to have a standard way for having fun, creating, reusing and sharing functionality. So that once you have your pieces really nice lined up, you can start building your favorite toy and have fun with it. So BioJS really, uh, we have at the heart this idea of making it fun for developers to create to reuse and to share. And this is what is at the core of the philosophy that we are trying to provide. You know, we want to allow people to have some minimum guidelines that allow them to easily create. So once you develop one component, then you know how to develop all of them. Once you know how to extend one component, then you know how to extend all of the different components. And of course, have the possibility to be able to find in one single place all of the functionality that is available so that hopefully you can really have a place where people can also share their software because they know that if they put their software there people are going to find it more easily and they know that if they put their software there they're going to have the credits and the acknowledgement that they deserve for this uh, projects. So really what BioJS is, is a collection of JavaScript functional components and guidelines. And this is our idealistic um, wheel of virtuous wheel, whereby we have a registry that allows you to discover the functionality. We have 
for every component that is in the registry, actually, we ask that has to, it has to have a test example where people can really use it without having to install it. And this is really important. The other thing is that the use that we promote that the components should be abstracted so that people can actually use them not just for one particular type of function so that you know you can hopefully extend them into something that could work for something else also we provide a common interface or an event way in which components can actually be combined by having a common interface between the different components then you can combine them and build them uh, and have more complex applications. Also, uh, configuration options for the different components so that you can really adapt them to your needs. And most importantly, I think the, the, the most important thing about this community or that this project is actually the fact that we have the appropriate structures to support the community through mail lists, through recognition, through the different types of inquiries that they might have. So I'm just going to have here a very abstracted representation of what a BioJS component would look like. So we will have different layers. And one of the layers is the style. Then we also have dependencies. So one of the things about BioJS is that it's dependency agnostic. In other words, you can use Raphael, you can use D3, you can use jQuery. It doesn't really matter. What we really want is that we have a minimum set of standards in terms of the way the components are built and also a minimum set of standards in the way the components are documented. So this is the portal if you go to biojs.net and we have it very clear that our aim is to be able to represent all biological data on the web. Okay, this is our vision. This is what we want to do. But our mission really is to build the tools to allow people to actually reuse, share and create components for visualization on the web. And as you can see here in the in the portal we have uh, if I can find the pointer, we have a, a really, and the pointer doesn't work. Why am I not surprised? Um, um, so anyways, we have if down in the image, you can see a few um, snapshots of really eye-catchy, interesting components that showcase the functionality that is available. Um, in addition, if you, look, if you go to our GitHub repository, is it working now? Um, so interestingly, so we have currently 23 active contributors, 666 commits. Well, um, hopefully it will change that number very soon. <laughs> and um, we have quite a few people uh, that seem to be interested in these projects. And what we've realized very recently is that uh, it seems that the project is kind of uh, attracting quite a lot of interest since um, and I, I'll, I'll talk to this. I'll talk about this in a moment. Um, but currently, we have 45. Oh, it, you cannot see there actually, but it says there are 45 different <coughs> components. Uh, so when you go to the registry of the different components, which is currently hosted at the European Bioinformatics Institute, you can see the name of the component, a little bit of a description, who developed it, the current version. So this is really useful because you know somebody you can contact if the thing doesn't work. And you also have a little bit of a, I guess, centralized repository where you can find everything that is currently available for this. So if you click on the link there of the top one, what happens is that you get to the actual page that describes and you can see in action the component, how it works. So this is an expression atlas baseline summary component. And the function of this component is basically to allow the visualization given a gene of the expression, under expression or over expression of, of that gene and the appropriate tissues in the body where it is uh, expressed or under expressed. On the right hand side, you can see the panel that represents and describes the different JavaScript functionality and events 
I mentioned that the events are the way in which different components interact to each other. And then the different methods that compose these components. And of course, the different dependencies. So this is what is really key about the project, is the fact that you don't need to install to be able to see, um, and this is funny again, uh, you, you, you can't see really, you, you don't really need to install the thing to see how it works. Uh, it also provides different tabs where you have an installation tab where you can see uh, the code that you need to cut and paste. So it's just a question of cutting and pasting. And then you have that component working for your, in your website. And it has the different options, etc. So as you can see, uh, we try to really provide the maximum opportunity to lower the barrier of contribution for people. Although, of course, as my, uh, my colleague before, uh, uh, Anthony, said, you know, uh, most people want just to use, right, to contribute. So this is, this is a very common, I agree with what you said before. And this is the actual component in action in the real database uh, at the Expression Atlas, how, how it looks. So it's completely embedded in the web page. It looks completely natural as another component within the other panels that this page has. And one of the, I said that one of the most important developments for this community has been the fact that we provide authors and contributors to be able to get credit for the for the work that they produce. And one of our greatest achievements, I think it has been the fact that we um, released the Faculty 1000 Research BioJS collection. So that was released in 2014, this year in February, and we managed to convince 12 people to publish an article for each of the components. So I think this is one of the great, I guess, strategic decisions that we have made, the fact that you know, you release the software, but you know, at least in the scientific community, unless you have a paper that supports that little piece of functionality, it's really difficult for you to really um, justify the work. And certainly it provides a lot more uh, rewards. And for us, now um, this collection allows us to publish one little application node per component and it's really worked very nice for us because it keeps people motivated, they feel rewarded and I think that we've made a great decision there. Another great development that we've had quite recently is the fact that we've become a Google Summer of Code organization. So if you go to Google Summer of Code and Bio.js, you'll see uh, this page. So we were awarded five internships by Google. And one of the things, and, and I think that this has been a turning point for the project, um, because I, I was very much looking to, to see what, especially when, when writing grants, to see the different metrics of the project growth. And I realized that the um, Google Summer of Code uh, as soon as it became an organization, our forum, our Google, our Google forum of uh, people uh, who uh, have joined our mail list, when it shut in, in for a month from 40 people, went to more than 100 in, des, in less than a month. So it, so it really gave us a huge exposure. So, uh, of course, I'm, I'm, this is not just my project, this is a, a, a project of many, many different people. So here I give you quite a few uh, names of the people who have been involved. So we have people in three different continents, mainly Europe and, and the United States. And um, please contact us if you are interested. Uh, hopefully uh, you can um, Talk to me later on if you are interested in being part of the, of the community. And just to finish off, just to say that I'm looking for a PhD position student uh, to work in my lab, to work on BioJS. And with that, I'd like to thank you all for your attention, and I look forward to further discussion later on. Thanks. All right, thanks very much, Manny. Um, any questions? Please like to come to the microphone in the middle, please. Okay, so uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, I just have a short question about, I'm um, interested in, to relate your goal because you mentioned you want to represent all biological data in the web. Uh, yet at the same time, um, you allow this 
you know, sort of like a fairly democratic process where everybody can chime in and give in their, you know, publish their components. I was wondering if there's any, well, how does the review go? Can, do you approve like anybody who comes to you and say, I have this representation of a sequence and then I want to publish it in your repository? Or do you have like a more tighter uh, review process? Or so the review process consists on uh, basically a, a, a validation test that we have for building the registry. That basically if you have the appropriate architecture as well as the appropriate documentation and it compiles to be part of the registry then it becomes part of BioJS and then it can be published so that's that's the the, the, the only requisite that we that we ask okay so in a sense and you can have somebody made a component a sequence object for example that's very simple yet yeah. on the other end somebody can make it very complicated and both can live in the same uh, ecosystem yes okay okay thank you Manuel great job thank you very much um, I've noticed that your community is already larger than that of all the other bio projects combined. Well, <laughs> in one year. So, uh, one question that comes to my mind is, uh, uh, you know, we're always very interested in, in, in attracting new talent into the pool of programmers. And so it's, it's because you're using JavaScript, are you, are you actually getting uh, uh, so, so inexperienced programmers yeah, that, that you're pulling into the project and, and getting them to a level that they can actually contribute? So, um, Currently, our biggest contributor is an undergrad, undergraduate student uh, in, a, in, in, in the Technical University of Munich. So, uh, and, and we recruited him through the Google Summit of Code. Mm -hmm. So, I think that, to be honest with you, most of the people who are part of the community don't do a lot of coding. <laughs> So you have like this, this type of waves where people become really, really excited, they contribute their component, and then they, they, once they kind of become accommodated, and then they all have, and they all attend the different calls, the different committees, they all want to have the credit, everything is nice, we, they have to win the papers and so on. But um, since at the moment, really, it's a, it's a volunteer-based community, so it's, 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 it's a challenge. It's a challenge, and, and so uh, the only way we've managed to keep this working is through the publication, because we've hardly had any money, really. Um, the only money that we've really had is, has been part of my salary. Uh, well, the fact that I, I work on like 50% of my time, and, and, and then the Google Summer of Code. So uh, it's been remarkable. I think the success of, of this community has been <coughs> I guess the fact that, bio, uh, that JavaScript right now seems to be a cool um, language, uh, as opposed to what Titus just said in his morning, uh, in, in his presentation this morning, I think it's kind of cool. Uh, and I think it's also the fact that you know being in the right place in, at the right time. And, and uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure I haven't answered your question. To be honest, it's, it's, it's a difficult question to ask. So to answer. To answer, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, we'll take it offline, but I think one of the exciting yes. developments will be mobile platforms. Yeah, and JavaScript is really... We've, we've had some people asking that, yeah. actually. Cheers, and talk to you later. Hi, hey, Manuel, nice to see you again. Um, uh, you please, can you not ask me questions? I know that you ask difficult questions all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I come and ask you a difficult question You're going to test me, aren't you? I know, sorry. <laughs> uh, so this year, my question is different. I, I, you just mentioned that you're reviewing the documentation and sort of whether it formally, you know, uh, passes some tests, but yes. who's, who's reviewing the visualizations? I mean, if 25 people submit Who? their favorite sequence, say, variant visualization, you'll end up with 25 different uh, so, variant um, I think you raise a very important point, and in fact it's a problem, because, um, and this is a confession to, to make, and it's the fact that we've realized through the Google Summer of Code that there were three people at the same time developing feature viewers there were five different types of alignment viewers. And so everyone is trying to uh, develop their own little way of the, for this particular uh, aspect of visualization. And, and you know, I found really hard to actually coordinate this, this kind of um, situation. So at the moment, the approach that we've decided to do is that we are gonna merge them all into one. I'm not sure if that's going to happen, but certainly we are organizing a hackathon in Munich 
uh, the first week of, of August to get the people together to do that. Mm. I'm not sure it will be successful, but it has to be, because otherwise it, it breaks the, the point of the project, doesn't it? But, but in, yeah, that, that's, sorry, I, I think I'll that is... I'll have to stop you, sorry, because we're running ahead of time. So if you take it offline, that'd be great. Sorry. Thank you. Cut you short, Manny. Thank you. We could just uh, thank Manny again. Thank you very much.